Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. The latest issue of Greg Pak's Darth Vader series was recently released, and in it, the Dark Lord of the Sith finds himself attempting to escape the trap set by Sabe and her fellow Amidalans. It was another stellar issue, so let's dive into the story. The issue begins and we learn that Sabe, Typho, and Tanra were the ones that summoned the Sando Aqua Monster, hoping that the gigantic beast would be able to destroy Darth Vader. As the aquatic beast is attacking Vader, Sabe, Typho, and Tanra try their best to stifle the Dark Lord of the Sith with blaster bolts. As they press their attack, Sabe shoots out a rock ledge that Vader and Z67 are standing on, resulting in them being swallowed by the aquatic monster. Tanra then releases a flying beast caller, which gets the Sando Aqua Monster to follow it and swim away from the Amidalans. While the beast swims further out to sea, Vader's contingent of death troopers are able to hone in on Vader, Z67, and the Sando Aqua Monster's location, driving the beast to shore. As the death troopers attack the beast, Vader erupts out of its neck, having sliced his way out. Vader then stabs the aquatic behemoth, killing it, and Z67 informs the Sith Lord that he's the first person on record to kill a Sando Aqua Monster, that the creature was roughly 932 years old, and that its death increases the chance of extinction in the species by 83%. To this, Vader asks the forensics analysis droid why this is relevant information, and Z67 states that he's merely relaying the facts surrounding the beast's death, and that the lessons anyone might draw draw from the information is up to them, which I absolutely love. Why should Darth Vader care that the existence of this species of animal has just been pushed closer to extinction? All that matters to Vader is obtaining answers surrounding Padme's death and who hid Luke from him. Damn to anything or anyone being in his way. This is yet another example of many showcasing Vader's selfish and careless pursuits in trying to reconcile Padme's death. We then transition to Naboo's capital city of Theed and learn that Vader has come here so as to choose the location of his fight against the Amadeus. Dolans. As Vader, Z67, and the Death Troopers leave their shuttle, they're caught in Gungan bubble warp projectors, and a large group of Amidalans stand before them. Captain Rick Oley introduces himself and proclaims that the Amidalans sentence Vader to death for the murder of Padme and Anakin Skywalker. Vader then asks Oley if he knew Padme and Anakin, and we see a flashback from when a young Anakin spoke to Captain Oley during the battle on Naboo in The Phantom Menace. After Oley tells Vader that he didn't see Padme die and merely buried her, Vader then makes his move against the group of Amidalans. With a contingent of fighters disposed of, Vader then descends upon the tomb of Padme Amidala. Before he's able to enter it, however, he's stopped by Sabe and four other handmaidens of Padme's. Z67 confirms the identities of each, informing Vader that standing before him is Irte and Rabe, two of Padme's earliest bodyguards, as well as Sashe, heroine of the Naboo resistance against the Trade Federation, and lastly Dorme, Padme's closest attendant during her early days on Coruscant. The group of handmaidens quickly move against Vader, making a valiant effort to defeat the Sith Lord. However, Vader is able to make quick work of the group by using the Force to choke them. With the handmaidens now disposed of, Vader begins making his way into Padme's tomb, where he sees the necklace that he made for his love decades earlier. Seeing the necklace forces Vader to recall the moment when he gave Padme the necklace, and we also see images of death and destruction that had been made in Vader's wake during his recent quest on Naboo, further scarring the planet. Crawling over to Vader, Sabe asks him if he's done yet, to which Vader responds no, as he opens Padme's mausoleum. And that's where the issue ends. Guys, this is yet another exceptional installment in this fantastic comic series. I love how effective Greg Pak is at showing us the utter sadness, destruction, and selfishness that surrounds Darth Vader and everything he does or touches. This series has yet to disappoint, and I can't recommend it enough. But what are your thoughts about the latest issue of Star Wars Darth Vader? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe, and stay nerdy.